Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. We're back in the hospital. It's time for Kendall to have another big surgery. This is a surgery that we hoped we wouldn't have to have. Uh, if you're new here, she's already had one very large surgery as a tumor resection to get the neuroblastoma tumor removed. She also had a kidney removed, some other lymph nodes removed, adrenal glands, a bunch of stuff. It was a major surgery. They sort of strategically left these lymph nodes behind because of the complexity and the risk in trying to remove them then, hoping that chemo would take care of them after the fact. And unfortunately, that hasn't been the case. And now that they are uh, creating a problem and pinching her intestines closed, and she can't eat. So she's been on a feeding pump for the last several weeks. Uh, and that's the only way she's been able to eat. So this week, uh, the objective is to remove or reduce the size of these lymph nodes and to also do a biopsy so they can better understand what's going on with them. And then they can sort of change and use different chemos to attack these lymph nodes because they've been there like this the entire time and they haven't really responded to any of the treatments so far. That's the plan, and uh, we're hoping to meet with the surgeon here soon, get a better idea of what's happening, what's not happening, and see where things go. Kendall, what you got here? Nanotape. Nanotape. What is nanotape? It's a really stretchy and thick tape that um, you can you basically just like seal um, the bottom and 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 this side. And then you put like a straw or like a pump on the top and then seal it and then you pump air into it and then it turns into a big bubble. All right, well, you're going to have you to show put, us. You can also put glitter and clay inside and also charms. Really? Yeah. All right, show us. What, this is a whole kit? Yeah. There's a bunch of different colors of tape? Mm-hmm. That's exciting. Not just clear tape, which is better than... Okay. <laughs> All right. So you've taken the tape, you folded it over and sealed it up around a straw. Mm -hmm. And now what? You blow it up. I blow it up or you yeah, blow it up? You. Me? Yeah. Okay. This is what we're working with here. Um, no, I would have said, because she's been, ha like, she's had a stuffy nose and, like, a cough for, I feel like, months. <laughs> like, I feel like it's on and off. Like, she always kind of has a stuffy nose. So I don't know if she has some kind of allergy or something. I feel air uh, leaking out. So, clear tune. You hold the camera. I don't think we're sealed up all the way. There we go. Yeah, that's what... Seems My head is so shaky. Bit, but, um, yeah, and if she needs more time, all that's fine. Um, but she's also at the age where she can take... I think she could start taking some adult medicine if she, if there's something, like, that we don't have in kids, like, some kind of okay, that's or good. whatever, later on. I mean, no, hand it to me. Today, but, uh, I gotta pinch it off. Mm-hmm. Oh! Oh, dang it. Here, let, let it, me like, do another gum. one. I'll do it another one. Okay. All right. Oh, It's not good awesome. to put, like... Second attempt. It's not good to put, like, the glitter glitter in it. So fold it over the top. Got it. That way. It's not good to put the glitter Stop. glitter in it because then when you're blowing yeah, it, exactly. it gets in your like, mouth. Do I want to risk it tonight, or, you know, I'm really tired, but yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, she's got, we've got to get. Oh. Oh, you didn't peel the stuff off the top. Oh, right. It's so hard to find the really tape. Like her, so. <laughs> 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 oh, I found it. I found it. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's so sticky. There it goes. All right. Oh, close. All right, we finally got one. Let me see. I'm so happy. It kind of just looks like bubble gum bubble, and it's really sticky like that, too. 
Oh, and it pops. Okay, we just spoke to the surgeon and there's a lot to unpack. Uh, the general idea is still the same, but, and here's, here's where this comes in, sort of the additional layers of complexity. There's, there's two sets of lymph nodes, I guess, that are, that are a problem, which is kind of news to us because we've been hearing about the one set of lymph nodes um, that are squishing the intestines but there's another set in the lower abdomen that are um, in question. So he said that one he can go in and remove, no problem, easy peasy. The other one that's causing the real problem is, what did he say is in the back, the backwoods? The, the deep, the, the back, bear, the bear, bear country? Bear country. Meaning they're really deep and really hard to get to, which is why he left them alone the first time. And even this time, his confidence level of being able to get in there and actually remove these lymph nodes is very slim. He said, I'm gonna do the best I can. I Sometimes you have a happy surprise, but he knows, because he's been in there before, they're very difficult to get to and access uh, in a safe way because of everything that it's up against and attached to and that sort of thing. So his plan is to remove the one in the lower abdomen and then do a biopsy, basically, of the other one so that they can understand the, the genetic makeup of it and that sort of thing so that they can s figure out which chemo to give her to treat it additionally uh, if he can't get it out and remove it. There's the other option, he said while he's in there, that he could reroute the intestines and bypass this uh, obstruction point, but he said that's like an absolutely last ditch effort. He doesn't want to do any more invasive surgery than he has to. He said he already has to mobilize the intestines, meaning move them out of the way to get to where he's got to go, but sort of replumbing some things is, a, is not ideal, but if he gets into a case where he has to put a hole in it or puncture it or do something anyways, he said at that point he would just go ahead and do it. But there's a potential for it to leak and all these kinds of things that he just wants to try to avoid. And then he also said that a lot of times the solution for this type of problem is just gaining weight. And I know that we talked about that in the last you know few videos ago of that was what he told us then was like you know a lot of times when this case happens when kids lose a lot of weight the solve is just to get some fat padding back in there and allow things to kind of move and flow and that sort of thing so they are coming to get her um pretty soon so we've got to get her wiped down with the chg wipes get her in her gown and uh ready for surgery to come pick her up You're all wiped down. You got your gown, your humongous gown on. Oh, I can see your feet now. Step away from the bed. You look, look at this thing. <laughs> you look like a ghost, Kendall. Do you want to show it off? She looks so tall. Yeah, she does. With that on. That's funny. All right, well, they'll be here soon. You ready? You're amazing. I know. <laughs> there you go. Keep up that attitude. That's right. Kendall, one more thing. <laughs> you got to put on the fancy socks to make it official. <laughs> Real fancy, huh? No. I like my socks better. Mine have cute designs on it. These ones are ugly. <laughs> Coming in hot with some stuffed animals there, Brandy. Yeah, I always got to have my stuffed animals with me. Duh. <laughs> yeah, these definitely fit me, but they're ugly, so. All right, now you're officially ready for surgery. Oh, no. you scratched me. Oh, it was my tube. <laughs> I'm not comfortable at all right now. <laughs> so this is uh, one of the more frustrating times of this journey so far. Honestly, it's quite a bit like the early days and not knowing anything. You don't know what kind of cancer you're dealing with. You don't know how you're going to treat it. You don't know what the future looks like. And that's kind of exactly how we feel again right now, because even though they have some particular plans in place, they don't really know which road we're going to go down yet until we get through surgery and have a better understanding of how much of these lymph nodes were able to be removed. Was it all of it? Was it none of it? Do we just get a biopsy? 
Uh, and each one of those kind of has its own path we can go down for um, future treatments and plans and procedures and that sort of thing. But we just won't know till we get through surgery. So, uh, you know, again, fingers crossed they can get all of it. But if we just get a biopsy, uh, they'll send that off and then they can do a very targeted oral chemo that she can take that will uh, directly attack the cancer within those lymph nodes and hopefully kill that off and, and shrink it. Um, but yeah, just a lot of unknowns, which is a, a very frustrating thing for people like myself and Brandy who just like to be organized and have a plan and know what's coming and prepare for things. But at this stage of the game, like you just can't really prepare or plan for anything. Okay, she is in surgery tonight. So just like last time, coming back to this empty room, it just sucks. It's so, Kendall brings life to the room, you know what I mean? It just feels empty without her in here. But she's in good hands. They estimate that the surgery could take three to five hours or so. The surgeon was explaining the biggest thing for him is how much scar tissue is in there uh, from the previous surgery and sometimes you're happily surprised and there's no scar tissue and it's very easy to get in there and see what he needs to do and, and get to work. Other times he said it's like somebody poured in, poured in a bag of, of concrete and you're just having to cut your way through to get to where you're going and then it makes it more challenging to see what you need to see and, and to do the work. So uh, there's a lot of unknown variables there and things that could make it take much longer or not. So it uh, doesn't sound like we'll be staying in this room. Sounds like we'll be going to the PICU for a night uh, is probably very likely. So I think we're gonna organize a few things in the room, get some stuff packed up, which is what Brandy is already working on, trying to get ahead of that. We won't really know until Kendall gets out of surgery and find out how much they did and how much sort of trauma she's gone through and what kind of recovery she needs, so. With the uncertainty of the surgery and knowing that, you know, it was a big factor ahead of time to like really get everything out. That was, this is the only time I felt like maybe we should have gone to New York and gone to Memorial Sloan Kettering. We had a conversation with them early on and I haven't talked about this, but we would really heavily consider going to MSK for treatment especially after Dr. Modak told me, he said like the surgery really, really matters. Getting all of it out the first time makes all the difference in the world. And our surgeon's great. We have tons and tons of confidence in him. Um, and I think, you know, he's obviously playing it very safe to ensure he doesn't hurt Kendall or risk, or there's like a risk reward sort of factor here. So, um, who knows, who knows? Maybe another surgeon would have run into the same thing based on the placement of these lymph nodes and how difficult they are to get to. We could be in the same scenario, but this is the only time throughout this that I'm like, man, what if we would have gone to New York? Who knows? How do you feel about things? Um, I feel like she's in good hands. I know she'll be fine after surgery. Um, I just, really hope they get more out than he's led us to believe that he can. I just want I just want them to take care of it and so we can be done with opening her up. Okay. We got Kendall back from surgery. She did great. Um, I think surgery lasted somewhere in the neighborhood of about four hours during the actual surgery. She was back in the operating room for 
I think closer to six hours uh, between sort of getting her ready and anesthesia and those sorts of things. But we didn't quite get the results that we were hoping for. The surgeons did the best they could to remove things. They removed the lymph nodes that they had easy access to that they thought was just a no-brainer. We'll get in and we'll get those out of the way. And then we'll we'll go in the uh, into bear country looking for these other lymph nodes, but they just, it was too risky. Apparently another surgeon came in, they were really trying to work together to attack this thing. And they had to cut through a bunch of scar tissue and that sort of thing to get to it. Just as he sort of suspected and prepared us for. And he really did a good job of setting our expectations kind of low. He, he never really over promised. It was very much, I think I'm only going to do a biopsy. You know, I think that's all I can get away with. And if I can do more, I will. And so we didn't go in with the high hopes that we sort of had a few days ago. So we didn't really go into it with the high hopes that we had just a few days ago, thinking, man, we're going to get all this out of there. She's going to be eating in a few days and that sort of thing. But she did really well through the surgery. And now we're just in this recovery phase. And I can't help now but think about you know, all these treatments that we've done recently, the immunotherapy in particular, that was so rough and so gnarly on her. And now this surgery that all feels like we haven't made progress. But Brandy and I were talking earlier today about how s some of it may be a blessing in disguise that we don't really know exactly quite yet, but it could be a blessing. And I was thinking about this where you know, the immunotherapy highlighted this issue with these lymph nodes um, and pinching her intestines and not being able to eat and then having to correct for that. And what if we would have skipped these immunotherapy treatments altogether and gone directly into the stem cell transplant? Um, I don't think that that would have been ideal scenario. One, because we still have these lymph nodes that we were dealing with that they weren't te terribly concerned about back then, but it was sort of this last minute decision to go ahead and try two rounds of immunotherapy. And then with this, the lymph nodes pinching the intestines, I don't know what it would look like in the middle of a stem cell transplant if they would do this GJ tube swap to get her nutrition in the middle of a transplant like that. I don't know what that would look like. I guess they could do the TPN for nutrition and. Anyways, you guys know us, you know, we just try to stay positive and think about things as, as positive as we can. So I'm choosing to look at it as there's, there's more to this and hopefully it's just a, a blessing in disguise, but I can't help but think we've done a lot of things that seemingly have got us nowhere. So anyways, um, we'll get through the night and tomorrow morning, the doctor's hopefully have some sort of idea of what the plan moving forward looks like over the next few weeks. I know they already have another set of scans kind of in the works, but as far as treatments go, like I really, I really don't know yet. So hopefully we can find that out in the morning. We made it through the night without too much too much drama. Everything was pretty cool, nice and smooth. I think Brandy got some good sleep. I slept pretty well. Kendall slept pretty much through the night. She just continues to impress me with her level of pain tolerance. Um, obviously she had some moments where she was uncomfortable and that sort of thing, but um, they did a great job of managing her pain with morphine and things of that nature. So. The night went, well, about as good as you could expect. Today, um, we've kind of been anticipating some things. Her heart rate has been uh, continuing to elevate, and she just spiked a fever a little bit ago. So they're kind of going through the motions of what they do when she has a fever. And we're waiting to see if we're going to move back upstairs to our normal 10th floor room uh, where, you know, the he monk floor and that sort of thing. So... 
we continue to play the waiting game there. I don't remember if I mentioned this to you guys yet or not, but the incision that they ended up making was a new incision. They were hoping that they could use her same incision, which before went across her abdomen, just kind of like along her rib line almost. And this time they went uh, vertically kind of up pat, you know, from her belly button up to her sternum sort of thing. I haven't been able to really fully see it. There's obviously a bunch of dressings over it and that sort of thing, but they changed directions, went vertical. He said it was just a lot easier to get to where he needed to be by doing that. So we we're kind of disappointed that she's got another big scar, but at the same time, a scar at this point is kind of the least of our concerns. So, but we continue to remain positive and hopefully they let us know where we're going to be for the next 24 hours at least so that we can kind of get organized right now. Our room is quite a mess and we just have stuff sort of thrown in here because we just, we knew we were just planning to be in here for the night last night and then going right back upstairs. So we didn't really take the time to settle in. So we're kind of anxious to settle somewhere for the next four or five days or whatever. So anyways, that is the update. All right, it's been another day, uh, relatively uneventful, except for now Kendall is kind of up and at him, moving around. PT was in here just a little while ago, making her change positions, get into a chair, get out of the bed for a little while. And we just got word that we'll be moving back up to our normal floor, normal rooms that we're used to and comfortable with and know everybody. So that's a, a bonus. Kendall, how you feeling, boo? Iffy. They do look pretty good, though, to be honest. A lot better than you looked earlier. A lot of progress has been made in the last, I don't know, 12, 18, 16 hours maybe-ish. Time is like out the window for me, I have no idea what's going on. But uh, they have started her back on the feeding pump, so she's got slow amounts of food going into her intestines to start to process, see how that goes. Um, lots of other great things happening. She's up on her feet, moving around a lot more and that sort of thing, so we are making progress in all the right ways hoping to get back to our normal floor normal room soon this will be the third attempt to get there and then something usually comes up and they want to keep us in the icu so we'll see how the next little bit goes till there's a room available for us up there and uh cross our fingers that doesn't get delayed any longer <laughs> Guys see that view that is a 10th floor view that means we are back home back well we're back on the 10th floor back in our normal floor normal rooms with all of our regular nurses and doctors that we know and love and trust uh, which gave us this sense of like being home when we finally got up here last night we ended up in the ICU for like four days which was three days longer than we anticipated being there for various reasons they had some concerns each day they ended up being nothing i think they were just being overly cautious if you can even be overly cautious in that sort of scenario um but they, they just wanted to keep a really close eye on her and make sure they weren't missing anything uh which is great so kendall and i are back upstairs brandy had to go home and get the uh, other kids ready for back to school and that sort of thing so she's there and kendall and i are just making progress. She's doing so good. She continues to make progress every day. Uh, we've been working with physical therapy. We're doing our stretches, keeping her calves nice and uh, stretched, not getting too tight so she's not walking on her tippy toes. We're doing laps around the floor. Uh, she's doing great. She still can't eat anything. She's on the feeding pump, so we continue to increase the rate of the feeding pump. Uh, she can do clear liquids again at this point, so she can drink water. She can have sips of Sprite. Uh, clear liquids, that sort of thing. I think the next steps uh, towards getting out of here are, you know, getting to our goal rate on the feeding pump and make sure she's tolerating that well and that she's going to the bathroom. And I think that that'll really set us up for discharge and getting out of here and getting home. What's up, Miss Kendall? Hi. How are you today? Good. You're looking like a million bucks. 
Even got your Bucky shirt on and everything, huh? Mm -hmm. Proud of you. You're doing such a good job. Will you tell everybody thank you for supporting you? Thank you. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up here so we can get this video done and uploaded for our normal Sunday schedule. We can't thank you guys enough for continuing to watch and support and leave comments for Kendall and that sort of thing. It really means a lot to us. If you want to continue to support her even further, uh, there are some brand new t-shirt designs down below this video. Uh, there's new designs, new styles. There's t-shirts, hoodies, men's, women's, youth, all the different things, a bunch of different colors to choose from and that sort of thing. So hopefully next week we see you from home and we are no longer in the hospital. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.